I threatened my husband. When he retires, I'm going to go up and down the block and talk to all our neighbors and tell them that he's capable of fixing anything that they could imagine breaking. <laughs> <laughs> if he bothers me too much. <laughs> That's a form of slavery. Don't do that. <laughs> well, I'll only do that if he doesn't let me, uh, give me some time to, uh, at least two hours a day I'd like for myself. <laughs> okay, here. Here I gotta let her. Okay. Ah, here I am. I got it done. It didn't take that long to gesso the board. How many coats do you gotta put on? Well, it depends how I want to do it. If I want it to be, you know, uh, and it really, it part of it is how smooth I want it to be. Part of it is, uh, I actually found that if I let it get the, the sit or the gesso sit a little bit and I put it on there, it gets a little thicker, sets up, and I can have a little tooth on my gesso. Uh, oh, that's nice. So sometimes I like to do that. Sometimes, and I I found that out surely by uh, not doing it right away. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I kind of liked having the tooth, you know, because when you you know gesso a board, generally it's very smooth. And, yes. But you can, uh, you know, and then there's other things you can add. But even the gesso starts hardening a little bit. It starts drying. And then it's a little thicker, and so when it roll, I use a roller, and it it sort of picks up and makes little tiny little, like little nappy things texture. Yeah. A little, just a little bit. So it's kind of nice. It gives a different feel to the brush. Huh? Yeah, that's what I do. I wonder if that would work with uh, pastels to well, give it more tooth. Uh, you can. Um, there's things you can you can buy. Actually, I have something here. Yeah, I have some, uh, what you call it, pastel ground? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to tell you. Yeah, you can, oh, here it is. Yeah, there's different, you know, the nice thing about these acrylic things is they have all kinds of different textures you can add to the surface and change it. But the thing is with making the pastel ground, I find it very difficult to do even ground. Mm -hmm. It is really even like by a standard paper. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it, it's um, kind of challenging to get the, the it even. It, it's almost like, and you know, when you add sand to paint and you want to have your walls have an even band. Oh, yeah, I've done that before. And it, it's not that easy to do. Do you know what I mean? It's not that easy and to get that even. Well, the same thing is true when you put, but then if you don't mind it's got the texture, then it's fine. But I think, honestly, I'm actually thinking the best way to do it, excuse me, guys, I think I just got gesso on my nice pants. Uh, the best way to do it is to actually uh, spray it on. If you could, that would give you an evener coat. Get a really nice coat, even coat, if you could spray it on. And I have a spray gun that I've used for other things, but then you know the whole process of cleaning out all the gunk out of the spray gun. I hate cleaning <laughs> spray guns. I had to do it for a long time, like 20 years. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm talking about, cleaning out the spray gun when you're done, when it's got all the inside of it you really yeah. you know otherwise you can't really use it I, I actually use the spray gun because uh, I like to do wood refinishing and um, I use it a lot for the varnish or the final I'll, I'll spray my varnish on my husband did uh, built all new cabinet doors for our, our uh, kitchen and wow really beautiful. They're frame and panel doors. They're beautiful. Anyway, so uh, it was my job to finish them. So that's what I did. Oh, was it a solvent base or water base? Um, I used, I actually didn't want yellow cabinets. I wanted them to be really natural wood. And so I used an acrylic finish. Okay, so it's water base. 
so it's water-based. Yeah. Um, it turned out really nice. There, I put on several coats and it takes a fraction of the time to do it when you've got, you know, 20 draw drawers to do. So, oh, and now my, my business partner brought me my, uh, so we're ready to begin. <laughs> good, 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 good. So I actually just got off a, a meeting, a, a free WordPress meeting. Let's see. And, um, uh, WordPress is a sort of a, a very inexpensive website and um, yeah, you don't even pay for it really. Uh, uh, but they have all kinds of plugins you can put in. So I don't know how to do that. So I go to this free meeting. I used to go in person right before Sketch Club, but then they stopped for COVID and now they're doing it online and it's actually better because I can see in detail, they'll share screens and I can see in detail how to, uh, how to adjust the site. And so it, it's really, it's amazing. It's so, it's free and you can learn so much. I mean, I love free, you know. Is it like a Zoom meeting? If, if he does it in a Zoom meeting um, and you, you know, basically, People just go around, they tell what their problem is, and then he, sh they share their screen and he tells them what to do. And everybody's Is it, is it so, like a club? Uh, if, have any of you ever seen meetup? Yes. So you, if you were to get up on a meetup group and type in WordPress meetup, you could probably find it. There, the thing is a lot of these meetup groups are, really advanced and coders go to them and nobody can understand what they're talking about. But uh, this one is for beginners. So I feel very comfortable with it, you know, and they have some intermediate people. But we have people now we're getting people from California and Florida and it's kind of cool, you know, we get to talk to but I had to leave it goes till eight o'clock. So anyway, um I have an interview with uh, Sherry uh, Thomas tonight, and uh, I'm kind of excited because, but actually right now, you know what Sherry Thomas is doing? She is, um, let me see. Brushing her teeth. No. Oh. <laughs> piano lesson. Sorry. She's teaching piano lessons. Pardon? She's teaching piano lessons. Oh, okay. Online or in person? Uh, she's doing them in person, uh, I guess, or she lives up in the boonies somewhere. And actually, I wish Jane were here tonight because uh, she would find out that Sherry Thomas practically lives next door to her. So, uh, and I think they would have a lot in common. So. I did talk to, and I have a recorded interview of Sherry that I'm going to play. Oh, no, I got my, you know, I have my, um, oh, but I'm going to ask you guys, while I do the, play the recording, if you would all mute yourself, if that would be okay. And then we'll talk about what she, and I think I was so excited about what she shared, so I will share my, I'm going to put this on the large here. I think I'm going to do it. I you to know that I, Sherry, uh, I've known her for quite some time. I've really seen how she's just developed and worked really hard. And yet she's totally a fun lady. She'll tell you a little bit about herself. I met her at plein air events, uh, but I think you'll find her um, interview You'll, you'll get, uh, so you know, you Sherry, about uh, how you got started painting and a little bit mm -hmm. about your development and what you see. Sure. Okay. Okay, so basically, um, I did a lot of artwork in high school, like, like most people do. And then when I got out in the world, I thought, oh, I'll go do commercial art. And I went to school in Denver for a year for a two-year program. But, um, and then I ended up not doing it. It just wasn't for me. Ended up going to school, getting an MBA and all that kind of good stuff. 
So when I stopped to uh, raise my children, a friend wanted me to take a watercolor class. And I thought, yeah. So we took that and I found I really liked it. So I kept taking classes and eventually worked my way into oil. But I did watercolor for about five or six years. And um, I, I just don't believe those people that say watercolor is easier than oils. Watercolor is way harder. Totally agree with you. Yeah. Totally agree with you on that. I know. So when you see a really good watercolor, you know the, the skill and talent that went into doing that. But um, yeah, I ended up just painting in oils. And then Deke uh, Pelchek is the one who got me started doing the plein air. And started doing some of that with her. And then it just developed into uh, more of a passion. And so I do a lot of plein air. Not this year, of course. But um, typically, I do a lot of plein air. It, it's, I need deadlines. I need um, some kind of motivation a lot of times to want to paint. I'm not as disciplined as other people. I mean, I paint most every day, but it's because I know there's something coming up and that I've got to keep my skills sharp. And that's what works for me. But that's what I've been doing. Um, there's just lots of painting on my own this summer. All my events got canceled. I was on my way to uh, Louisiana, got to St. Louis, got a phone call saying it was canceled. So I turned in downtown uh, St. Louis and drove back home. That was the end of the plein air season for the year. <laughs> oh, so now when you say skills, like when you transitioned from watercolor to oil, you know, there's certain things all, they all painting have in common among mm -hmm. them being composition and, uh, you know, you know, basic design, you know, all sorts, you know, but the, the approach, you know, with watercolor is one of, you know, th there's a certain amount of decisiveness you have to have at the very beginning right. that is different from oil painting for, for, to a certain extent. Would you Yes. Say? Well, the thing with watercolors, I think you have to have more of a plan before you start. I mean, I do a lot of sketches. In fact, just a second, let me grab it. So I do a lot of sketches like this beforehand, before I paint. You have an idea. Uh, and these watercolor sketches? Um, no, these are just pencil graphite oh. kinds of sketches. Oh, they're graphite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I, did I move it away too fast? Yeah, it's kind of... Cause okay, I'm sorry. Here, I'll hold it there for a little bit. Okay, so this is pencil. Yeah, so these are pencil sketches that I do. Um, trying to figure out what's going to be the best kind of composition and what makes sense. So, are, because they're so smooth, is this really on soft, you know, because they, they don't seem to be, you know, normally with graphite, you see a little bit more, especially sketches, they seem... Uh, yeah. I'll try to hold it closer, but yeah, it's just on the Richardson rich, so sketchbook. Pardon? Your transitions are really subtle in your sketches. Yes. Yeah, yeah I don't do uh, no tan okay. when I do this. For me, it, I tried it, and it works. It helps, but I prefer to do it this way to have more of a plan to me. Okay, that's fine. I have a variety of values. So, but when I do watercolor, when I used to do watercolor, I'd have to sketch out things like that and have a plan because, as you know, you have to start from light to dark. And with oil paintings, sometimes I, I sort of start from a mid-tone when I paint, and then I add in the darks and I add in the light. So I don't necessarily just start with the darks and work towards the light using oil. But I always have a plan of some sort. Well, you did, with the sketches you showed, uh, me, huh? you had your big shape. You, you really yep. defined your big shapes and uh, where the smaller shapes would be. Right. And, uh, even to a certain extent where, where you had higher contrast, that's going to be where your focal point will be. Right. You say that, yeah. So, um, so when you made that transition, what did you, from watercolor to oil, because I do have people who do that, what would okay. you say was the biggest learning curve that you had? Um, Believe it or not, the first thing that I learned is, is, you know, with watercolors, when you paint with it and then you're, you want to switch colors and you just dip your brush in the water and swish it around and pick your next color, I learned you can't do that with oils. 
all of a sudden you have this big gunky mess inside your turpentine container. But um, so uh, Dawn White Law is the person that I took my first oil class with. And she's like, no, 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 don't do that. And just learning how to mix colors and the differences on that. But um, as far as a transition learning, I think it's just a matter of painting a lot. I tended to, when I first started out with oils, what I tended to do was make everything about a middle value all the way across. And they were ugly. Oh my gosh, they were so ugly. Uh, let me show you my cabinet here of just some of the paintings. So I don't know if you can see this. Yes. And then I have three other shelves that are twice as long as that with paintings. Ah, let me move my clock. But this is just part of it. It's not all the ones I've thrown away and stuff, but I have several other shelves of paintings that I've done. And I go back and look at the old ones, and they just, they had no... They were just really flat, whereas with watercolor, I could, because you're sort of forced to start with light and then work your way to dark, I found that I had more contrast in my paintings. So when I first started out with oil, my paintings were really, like I said, that all just all mid-tone. In fact, I see that in a lot of people that are painting. Their paintings are really flat. How do I, let me think of something here. Um, let me just grab something from my awful shelf. Let's see. Here's one. This one, I don't know how well it will come across, but it's really, it's got some variety, but it's all flat all through here, and there's not much definition between the trees and the ground plane. It's just, it's flat. So a lot of times after I paint these things, I'll come back later, and I'll add some contrast to it, but that's what I've had a hard time transitioning to. Well, I can see that, um you know, because that is a, you know, being, making a decision and, and making something bold sometimes is, a, you know, watercolor, you're, you're, you, you can build up to that. Yes. But yeah. with, with, there's a tendency, I think, in oil painting to stay in those middle values, especially when you first start out. Oh, yeah. I see it a lot in my classes. I can't hear you. You put it on mute. Okay. Uh, my uh, family is waking up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to tell them that um, I'm recording. <laughs> so, yes, I'm on a call. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead. I'm going to probably stay on mute unless, unless I have something to say, okay? Okay, that's fine. All that's right. That's fine. So, um, but like I said, that's what I see a lot in myself and other people, particularly if you're plein air painting. I think because you look at something and you're like, okay, I'll paint that and you paint that. And then you go and you look at something else and you're not saying, well, well what's the value of this thing on this side versus the value of the thing that I just painted? Because your eyes adjust to it. So those are things that I think you have to be aware of is look at and squint a lot and say, and always ask, what is the value of this thing compared to the sky versus the ground plane versus what else I just painted. And those go back to those compositional things. You were talking about John Carlson in that the sky is your lightest uh, value. And of course it shines on the ground plane. So then the ground plane's a second. And then on your slanted plane, it's going to have some more light that hits it. And then your upright plane will always be the darkest. Unless, you know, there's always exceptions. You could have the sun, like when it's setting, it's going to be hitting trees or after a storm. But 90% of the time, that rule really, really applies. So it doesn't matter what color you use. What really matters is the value that you're doing and how it compares to other things. And um, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. If this is okay with you, I'm not sure if this is on your schedule. Okay. <laughs> but uh, with there's a book that I, I bought last year, and I absolutely highly recommend it. It's not cheap because it comes with a video and stuff. It's, it's like $300 or something. But it's this book by John Potoshnik. And what it, his theory is, is, is that if you use, if you use um, certain colors off the color, you know, like complementaries and stuff um, on, how do I explain this? Well, you can see where they, he's done this quadratic, this rectangular quadratic. 
So yeah. using this color, the rule is the only color you can mix are these four, and you put those on your palette, like what he shows here. And then you only use those four colors. You don't go back in and dip into um, any, th any of the other colors on your palette. Like you set them completely aside. And then these are all the colors he mixes. So that's something that I've found um, really valuable. And I wanted to show you based on that one that I had. So what I've been doing are these tiny things. And I said, okay, well, if I took that green and made that my sky color and did my water and did everything else, what, you know, what could I create with that unusual color pattern? A lot of purple in there. And the sky is actually a white added to the green. So in addition to this palette, you do get to use a white. But you have the, I have those four colors. But as a comparison, I don't know if you can see this. Same color palette. But I just switched it up and said, okay, now let's make the sky purple instead of green. And let's switch out some of these other things. But it's exactly the same four colors that was on that. And it's sort of like a game. It's the only thing, only those four colors. And it really makes you think about color and value much more than if you were just painting what you see in front of you. Does that make sense? Oh, I totally um agree with you because you know one of the things that excuse me one of the things that i was originally you know instructed with with plain air is that you you copy exactly what's out there right and first of all you know maybe you you check your values that way mm -hmm. but not necessarily everything because nature doesn't necessarily provide a good composition I or agree. good color and um limiting your palette like which he did do mm -hmm. the colors let's say he used decided to use a certain blue like ultramarine blue and he was just going to use that and uh you know the three other colors he right. don't dip into uh per cerulean or a different blue yep yep because what you're doing then is you're creating a harmony a natural harmony in your painting mm -hmm and you construct it that way and you can like that was really interesting and you know illustration you had between the two paintings basically using the same color palette yep. but getting a totally different feel with that com you know the way you uh, adjusted the combination and put put a greater emphasis on other colors and used maybe the other co other colors less yep. lesser degree and you're creating an entirely different feel and the word you use that i love is the yeah. word game game it's something yes. you play with and yes, so, exactly and, and so you're you, it's not like and sometimes your game you don't win the game <laughs> you well, i lose a lot, lot. <laughs> but you but you learn a lot in the game and you have that attitude of gaming, of this being something you're playing with, you're investigating, you're exploring, then um, you learn so much, you know, you rather do. than being discouraged, do you know what I mean, by, um, uh, you know, by the fact that you're maybe uh, not, it didn't turn out quite the way you imagined. And I think sometimes letting go of what you imagine. Yep at the beginning particularly is a real important thing to be able to do. Uh, I agree. And that's what this makes you do because you're like, you just so badly want to dip into say like a yellow green and, but you can't because that's not what the rules are. But the thing that I like is you actually paint faster when you have just those four choices and your values tend to be stronger because back to this part, you can see, like where the darker values are right here. And so if you want darker values, you've got to pop in that purple. You can cross mix some of these colors, but I tried really hard not to do very much of that either, but it forces you to hold those values too. So it makes a lot of decisions for you. Well, but also I think you get some beautiful neutrals. This yes. Beautiful neutrals and most of nature, a lot of nature is neutrals. So I agree. That's really great.
Um, so I did another one, not using that, but using a different color combination. And that's what I came up, same kind of rules. And then I have all my little paintings. Then this one, now when we were talking about how nature doesn't provide very much, the reference, I did this off of a photograph, it was all green. Everything in the whole thing was green. And because I could only use like an orange, a purple, I think I, had, I, think I used, actually I think I say I used the same rectangular quadratic color combination. Um, you get your favorites. But my trees are purple. And of course the background's purple, all the upright planes and everything. So um, yeah, it's something to have a lot of fun with. I'm trying to think what else I had that I wanted to show you. Um, oh, let me show you this. This is a fun one. Oops, as everything falls off. Okay, so one of the other things I've been doing when we're talking about general is, is I've been trying to do some different color combinations using John Potoshnik's idea of just limiting the color. So this is what I've been working on is developing some of these paintings oh. with a little different color to them. Yeah, so instead of a dark green here, I've got sort of that blue and that purpley blue that falls in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I've done a larger version of this as one of the paintings I sent you um, in an email. But here's where I'm having a lot of fun is because we don't have these events, why not play with color? So I went and bought a bunch of um, acrylics. That's a different animal working with that, but I've been doing these abstracts, trying to learn how to do that. I don't know if you can see this, but it's, it's using, my husband says it's like walking through a fluorescent forest, but I love it. I'm having such fun with that, and I don't know if you can see it. Well, you know. It's I, got really thick paint. Yes, yes, yes. Now, are you using any additive to your acrylic paint? Uh, yeah. Gel or I, something like that? What am I using? I am using... Oh, modeling paste. Oh, okay. That I mix in with it, and then I have a matte gel. And because I'm in the basement where it's cold, it doesn't dry as fast, so I, I have a little more time. And the matte gel sort of seems to extend its life. That's true. Now, can I ask you, when you work with your acrylic, do you have a dry palette, or do you put it underneath? Um, I don't know, because I work with acrylic quite a bit. And sure. I have a... I use like a paper towel or a sponge, and then over that I put uh, either, you can get palette paper, or you can just use tracing paper on top and put yeah. your paint on top of that in a dish of some kind or a container. Mm -hmm. And it, it and your paint will really stick, not dry out at all. I don't know sure. if you're, so. I use a paper plate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And oh, that's I don't, like the worst thing to do because I was I was teaching. <laughs> well, I use the I use the coated paper plates though, okay. not the ones that absorb. <laughs> Suck all the water out of no. Them. <laughs> so it, well, it's just if you want to, if if you're finding your paint color is and you're right in the basement it's cold it's not going to dry as right. quickly but if you want to keep that paint really juicy and not drying out and you can actually save it, you can actually get a Tupperware square, put the, okay. put the paper towels in the bottom and put like um, tracing paper on top, or you can buy palette paper and put it on top and seal the thing. And it'll stay for days. Oh, okay. I mean, like it's, it's better than oil. <laughs> I, mean, it's really, it's really, I mean, in terms of not drying out, because yeah. of moisture in there, and you'll, okay. you'll save yourself a lot of money with paint. So, okay. and just, uh, well, I just started, so that's good to know. Yeah, I'm well, just <laughs> I'm just putting paint on the plate and grabbing a palette fun. knife and isn't going crazy. Fun? Isn't it fun though? The, and it the, is. And it, it is nice. The nice thing about acrylics is that you can go right on top, right almost pretty soon. You don't have to wait. Oh, oh I know. That's that's the thing that I love. Like I'll grab this painting again. I don't know if you can see that, but you know, you start with this dark color and then you lay that color, lay the red and then you put this magenta over the top and the next one. And so it's just, yeah, I love how you can layer right away. No, close this, to right away. Is this from your imagination or was this based on somewhat, it seems to me like a forest. It is. Okay. So it's, it's, it's imagination. So basically it's laying down all these dark colors underneath. 
and then going back in and doing negative painting so some of that watercolor experience comes into play and doing that and then start defining your trees and using palette knife and start laying some of these brighter colors over the top to make it pop. It's really beautiful. I'm real excited. I know, I mean, it's been, you know, for me, this, it's forced me to do things that I would have otherwise been worried about, you know, getting ready for an event or something yes. like that. And so I'm able to experiment more and play, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it's been good learning experience. Good for um, you. I just, it, do, did you have any, did you say you sent me some pictures? Because I didn't actually see the, did oh. you say you sent me something? Because I, I didn't yeah. see that. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, that's okay. It was just that abstract painting that I just showed you. Oh, okay. And um, what was the other one? Oh, it was the larger version of the willow trees. So what I've been trying to do is, is more palette knife painting. Let me grab a different painting. Hang on. I can reach it. Ah. See, I'm going to have to take off my headphones just a moment. All right. So here's the other thing I've been doing more of lately is, is do you still have the green of the trees, but the, the shadows are more purpley color? Yeah. To me, that just, it's a nice compliment to the green. Yes. Um, I think purples and blues really make a big difference. But then what I did is, is I, I'm starting to use more palette knife through, through my paintings to give them texture and depth using oil. And like, like right through here, it's dragged through to, um, with the palette knife. So I did an underpainting basically through here, and then I came back with the palette knife and laid it on top. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think I'm gonna share my screen because I think I see a painting that you have on your website that's oh. with a palette knife, and I, okay. I want to yeah, just see if I can. Okay. Yeah. While you're doing that, I'm gonna grab one other one. Okay. Yeah, that one's definitely palette knife. Yeah, I was gonna say that, but you do have the whole. Um, it also looks very thin back here. Can you see my mm -hmm. hand? Yeah, I can. Is the paint um, relatively thin back here? Yeah, a lot of times what I do with palette knife is, is I'll do pretty much an underpainting on it. Mm -hmm. And then the areas where I want to have texture and more depth, then I'll take the palette knife and lay it over the top. So if you look at the upright trees, you can see palette knife. Uh, the ground plane as it gets closer to you has more palette knife and the lower parts there yep so i think it it just makes a painting more interesting to try yeah. to give it some depth and texture it's really nice i mean it's this is a little new for you isn't it it is well i've been i started doing it last year but i didn't really spend a whole lot of time doing it but um at where was it new berlin yes new berlin yes they have their plein air event and I used that John Potoshnik uh, for color choice and found that I could paint a lot faster with palette knife and by limiting my colors that it all just seemed to fall together a lot better. Yes. So I, I've been working on it for about a year now. It's, this is beautiful back here. I mean, and you do have now talk about Carlson's, um, you've got the sky is the lightest then the second lightest is the, um, the ground here. You know, especially yep. the general ground. And then you have your upright trees that are the darkest. Mm -hmm. And you have your, we don't have mountains. I don't, <laughs> but that's sort of the distance, the, you know, is a yep. little in between. And it, it's, um, but it's really fresh, um, really nice uh, piece. Thank I really you. Like. I, I think, think that's where the palette knife makes a difference. I think it does keep it fresher looking. And I think it's a little harder to overwork work a painting when you use a palette knife. I think once you get used to it, you become more decisive on values and colors, and you quit messing with it and licking it with your paintbrush. You know, where you just keep working, yeah, I mean, working, and working. Nice, nice baths of color. And, and, you know, even in this area here, it's a similar value, but you still have, like, color temperature changes mm -hmm. that that make uh, create some form but they still they're not so different in value that 
you lose the structure of your design at all. You know, it's oh, good. really nice. Thanks. Really nice. Anyway, this is, I, this what is, I, uh, saw that, I saw that when I was looking at your stuff. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I don't think this is on my website. I got to get some more paintings. Um, on my website, I don't know about you guys, but it takes me forever to photograph them and get them fixed and put them up on my website. I need to get an assistant. <laughs> this, I don't know if you can see this. You got to hold it. still for a while. Yeah. All right, hold still. Okay. So this is that John Potoshnik color choice thing. It's a 16 by 20, and I'm going to get closer so you can see some of the texture. Am I holding still enough? Yeah, 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 it's good. It, it's still okay. hard, but yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. But um, the thing that I liked about this is I did the same thing with the underpainting and the palette knife, and I got it done in three hours. And so that's I'm a like, sizable shape. I mean, that's got to be at least, uh, what, a 16 by 20, maybe? Yeah, it's a 16 by 20. And the thing is, is that like these were all those evergreens back there that you know are, are dark green but because i didn't have much in the way of dark green to work with you say okay what other color can i use that would at least give me the right value and that that's sort of that whole theory is if you get it the right value it will read like it's supposed to it's beautiful it's great i'm really excited now when you say you, you don't begin with your palette knife you end with your palette knife is that correct yes. Yes. well i'll start with a palette knife just to lay the paint on but I'll go over it with my brush. So if I have a painting and I know the sky is going to be blue, I might mix it up with my palette knife, a big thing of blue. Just put some of that on my, my canvas and then I take my brush and work it around. So instead of always trying to dig up the paint with my brush, I lay it down with that palette knife. And the nice thing with the palette knife is that it fills in a lot more, more areas than I would with the paintbrush. And then I work my paintbrush around and it thins it as I use it on the, the canvas. Then I come back later, after I've got my clouds and everything else, I'll come back with a palette knife and I'll lay in some thick passages where I really want to show color. Okay, um, so does that make sense? Yeah, of? you use your palette knife to, to put in a broad strip of colors and you move it around a little bit with your brush. Right. And then you come back in uh, when you're at near the, near closer to the end of the formation of whatever you're making and add thick paint with your palette. Right. So if you have that thin paint underneath when you drag your palette knife with a different color over the top, you'll see some of that underneath color come through. So you get a little bit of a vibration of colors, particularly if they're complementary colors. And so I think it makes it more interesting versus if I just did all palette knife. Um, if I do an underpainting, like I said, then you just see those two colors. Well, it's, I'm so thankful. Is, uh, is there anything else you would like to share? Because I, I, but I, I think you've been yeah. generous with your time. And I, 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 I know that you would have loved to have joined us on. I know. Okay. And if that ever happens, please just pop in and I'm sure you'll be peppered with questions. <laughs> but I really appreciate what you're sharing, and uh, do you have anything that's going on? Nothing, other than, because there's no events, right? Well, actually, there's one, the Mineral Point at Paint the Point is actually having their event. So I'm going to go and be one of the three judges there for it. And then I got into Plein Air, Texas, but I don't know if that's going to happen in October or not. Everything else that I was scheduled for has been canceled. But I really just recommend everybody keep painting. It's, it's a hard time, but, you know, for most of us, painting is our happy place. And why not, you know, keep making beautiful stuff while you can? Well, thank you so much, Sherry. Oh, thank you, Judith. So grateful for you doing this, Sherry Thomas. And um, I'm going to link below where, where you, they can find your paints and find you. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Well, one more thing. I have an Instagram account, sherrythomas.artist, and you'll see the paintings that I never quite get to post on my website up there. Okay, great. Those are easy. I right. You can just clip the, take the picture and pop it up there, and it works. And they leave, have a little editing, and it's great. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So All right. Much.
Thanks. Bye. Bye. So that was fun. Okay, here we go. How are you all? Can you hear me? Indeed. So <laughs> I, I had yeah. so much fun with, um, with Sherry and I was, she was so generous with her time. And I, you know, I actually ordered that book. So I didn't order the video, but I ordered the book. So I, I haven't gotten it yet. Actually, I got up uh, and I, I really, um, yeah, I really appreciated her, uh, how much I saw in terms of how she thinks about painting and how she works. So uh, I'd love to add, you know, I can, I, I did tell her that, it, you know, she's actually teaching piano and right now and doesn't get done till like 8, 830. And so she can't be a part of our group. So if she can sometime, I told her that if she did, we would pepper her with questions. But I will uh, send you all a link, and if you want to thank her, that would be super. If any of you want to thank her and, you know, ask her questions, I'm sure she would be more than happy to answer them. So, tell me what else. Uh, what, what do you have any thoughts about what she said? What, do you have any ideas or, or thoughts about what I, she said? I like the idea of a limited palette. Um, and I think I might have seen something, but I can't remember what book I read like several years ago that talked about the quadratic color thing and triads and all that stuff. I just can't remember what book that was, but there was another book that I read. But I don't apply it because I was too new, I think, to painting then. Well, I've got an author, John Potashik, I believe is his name. Uh, I actually went and looked up and watch, he doesn't have a lot of uh, YouTube videos, but he has a few. And what he did in this book, which I, I have done, had my students do, where I'll have them do the same painting, the same basic theme with the same values and using a different color palette, but you know, maybe two paintings. He's got something like 35 paintings. But you see, then you're, and, and part of it is it becomes a game as, as, as a, you know, to teach you. I mean, insofar as you're, you're, you have this, you don't have to worry about all these other problems, you know, like, you know, what's your composition? What you, you come, you have this good composition and you're just playing with it with color. And so it sort of frees you up to not, to just explore color and find out the effects that you can get from color. And I think it really is a, um, a great way because there's really no other way to learn what you can do with those colors after you experiment and play with them. Does that register with you guys at all? Or what do you think? I think you can change the mood. Yes. Yes, for sure. Well, I've heard this a number of times. You know, if you've got the values right, everything else will take care of itself. And if you try to do just black and white painting, you can study values quite a bit. Just use black and white and go into it. And that's a ex learning experience too. But well, that's I'm my piece. <laughs> looking at my paintings, and I've been thinking that I tend, uh, especially in some of my paintings, I almost to be somewhat monochromatic yeah in my paintings and um it I, and I, and also and if not if that's not the case that happens i tend to fall into using certain colors all the time and so i have a certain feeling i can create with my paintings in that those colors so if i change for example and they don't use alizarin crimson as my red, or I don't use a cad red as my red, and I use burnt sienna as the red, um, I can almost get a whole different feel from the colors. And so, um, yeah, I really, I really, I was really intrigued with that. And that's why I, I ordered the book. And, and I like the idea, the exercise of trying the same theme and trying all the different ways that you can you can work the colors with that, you know. I think that would well, really 
you know, real good exercise to try. What I found is I've been working with Corel Painter and digital art, digital art, and uh, their color palette's incredible. Um, and your 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 flexibility and manipulation, uh, working with all your color harmonies, it's right at your fingertips, whatever color you'd like. Um, however, with that much at your disposal and everything, uh, I can get pretty complicated because when you just pick up a brush, you get your favorite brush. Well, you can pick up your favorite brush with a digital program and you adjust the bristle length. You adjust, you adjust how heavy it is on the, uh, on the painting. You adjust how wide the profile is, um, what the opacity is, uh, how much you want resaturated. It's, it's just uh, um, a, different, a different beast altogether. But it's, but it's fun and it's a learning process. Well, you know what, Tom, I think it might be good. Maybe you should do a demo for us. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> Online, you could share. You could share. No, well, I wouldn't. Process? I wouldn't want to subject you to the tedious process I go through. No, no, but I'm I'm saying that you could do something where we could maybe even see 15 minutes and see what you do and how you do it. It would be fun, I, you know, because we had you know, not, I, I probably won't, uh, well, I mean, I do work in Photoshop and I adjust uh, paintings sometimes. Uh, I try to get them to look more like my actual paintings or sometimes when I have a painting that I'm looking at and I want to see what does it need, I increase the contrast or do something to it. Right. I make my painting like the way it's adjusted in the Sure. Yeah, so it's a great way to. It's a great. It's a great tool in that sense. It's a great tool. It, it, yeah. Yeah. So. But I'm nowhere near. I'm just. I just purchased this, and it's a huge learning curve. I would imagine it is. I would imagine. It's a huge learning curve, but it's very, very convenient. All I do is I pick up my Surface Pro, bring up my painting, and I can sit on the couch. And I can do my thing. So, but the problem with it, and you could take it outside, but there's a lot of glare on the screen, which makes it a difficult thing to take outside. So, are you going to be printing these? Well, it, it, what's, what I may be. <laughs> it's a, it's a whole. It's. I mean, I, I would because my really what I do, what I paint doesn't. My paintings are not thick paintings, so. I'm always taking the paint, spreading it out thin, and working with the values in that sense and the colors in that sense. So digital art would probably work for me on a print, um, as opposed to somebody who wants to do uh, thick painting. Well, I know that you can be, uh, I, I still like to see what you're doing. Uh, what? Now, was there any other reactions that you had from from some of the points that she brought out, like um, adjustment of color or um, her use of the palette knife? I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, one of the things I know from experience as a plein air painter is getting in your shapes and values as quickly as possible before for the, the light change and using a palette knife the way she was describing it would be, uh, you know, accelerate that process. And that sort of struck me as kind of a helpful tip. Didn't she say that she did that large painting uh, in three hours with the palette knife? No. Yeah. Yes. She did some pretty, she does some pretty nice work. Yeah, you guys should go look at her. Uh, Sherry Thomas's website is really, she's got some beautiful things in there. Um, I'm yeah, looking I looked at it. Yeah, it's, she's really done some wonderful things. And, and it, it is, she, uh, not last year, but the year before, she was actually, she's been a, an award winner several times. But this palette knife idea, she 
I think something she just started and I really, really like it. Um, Cause I, you know, as you guys know, I've been doing this abstract class and I want, I don't know if I can totally go abstract. I have fun with it, but I would like to bring in some of that, that quality of the paint, you know, the, the, the juiciness of the paint and the freedom and the kind of the, some of the elements that you get in abstraction that if you're too tight with your brush, you don't get. And, and you know, I know that you can be a, like an ultra realistic paint, painter, but I kind of like the paint. You know what I mean? I'd like that making, well, anyway. To spend money. <laughs> well, anyway, so I really was excited about it. So anyway, the other person I was talking to was Deke Holacek. We had talked to her uh, about her uh, last, I think it was in either May or June, and we, we did a class. Uh, and I, I contacted her, and she's taking care of somebody who's like 80 years old. But I am going to encourage her to, um, uh, you know, see how that goes, because I'd like her to be a guest and, uh, and talk about her way of working, too. So, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I'm so glad you guys come and, and, and join us and talk about stuff. And I, I really, I really like, um, yeah, I really like it. It's good. Yeah, it gave me a bunch of ideas. <laughs> what were your ideas, Kathy? Well, I like this. I, while you were uh, talk, looking, I saw there's all different types of uh, color, like the quadratic. You can find that by doing a search on color harmonies. And of course, they talk about anal analogous and monochromatic. So maybe I'll mess around with that a wee bit. You know, try the different things with just one picture. You know, we'll see. <laughs> well, I'm kind of right. interested um, in her the way she used the palette knife to sh to really bring out the foreground and a little bit of the middle ground, and then it was smoother and flatter in the back. And I was thinking that you know, working in pastels, you could use a pastel ground. Um, kind of in the same way as the palette knife and uh, create some texture there in the in the um, in the foreground or things that you wanted to highlight and um, that would certainly add some interest to the painting too yeah I, I'm a pastel artist but I actually used to working um, with sanded paper rather than sanded paper and uh, if I want to get uh, a contrast and texture, I kind of go from very smooth background and then I'll have the strokes, you know, the stroke that you use. But that would be, you know, I know that um, you'd have to plan that a little bit. Do you know what I mean? In terms of if you wanted to have texture in the front um, or in the foreground of your image. Uh, do you work on? Yeah. Do what? Do you work on sanded paper, or do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I work on you art. And what about you, uh, Sherry? Uh, you gotta unmute yourself. About you okay well I was with her when she did that painting which was uh, at the field in New Berlin okay I was I was with her we've done New Berlin together so I thought it was very interesting when I first started painting, we, we had color wheels and you had to just um, choose a theme, a color theme before you even got started. It could either be split complementary, which is what 
it looked like she had split complement or opposite or monochromatic or a triad. So there's all different, that's, you can do that in any media. It, it does add unity. It does bring unity to your paintings. Whenever you limit your palette uh, and mix your colors, you, you, you create a natural um, harmony in your painting. And yeah. And, and unity. But I really, I really believe that, you know, it's one thing, and one of the things I'm really feeling is that, like, sometimes we think that if we, like, learn about these palettes, or we learn about these triads, if we just learn it, that when we do it, it's going to work, you know, but I think it's part of it, just testing and exploring and playing with it is so important and trying, you know, different yeah. things putting a lot of pressure on success, you know. You how about, to play. How about you, Bill? How about me? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I love her art. I, I love the, the landscapes and uh, I love how she uh, portrayed the water in her paintings, you know, the reflections and that, and that's, uh, she's got a lot of talent. Well, you, you, you saw the pile of paintings that she had that were rejects. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, I think we, got it. We, got I think it. we all have our own little piles, don't we? I think we have to increase our reject pile and yeah. be fine with it. Right. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed her art. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it too. So. And what about you, John? Well, I agree with her. I'm, I'm working on an oil painting now, and the, instead of using the palette, I've got little porcelain cups. I've got three of them. And so I kind of keep my colors in the three cups, and it doesn't bother me if they blend together. I have like three, two or three colors in each cup, you know, earth and greens and stuff. And that adds a unity to it because they'll automatically mix because I, I don't have, I can't separate it over the palette surface. I got to work with these, these little cup things about like this, or porcelain, well, you know, so the I browns mean, intermingle and the greens intermingle and stuff. And I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I've never heard of that, working in little cups. Yeah, they're little flat disks. They're almost like pudding cups, shallow pudding cups. So do you get variation within the cups? Oh, yeah, because it's only this big. It, you can't spread it out. And so you're working on this color, and this one kind of develops, and you just, you know, go, and then it's got a natural blend in there that you don't. But they're separate in the in the grays and blacks and the browns and the the greens and blues and things you know, and yellows are in, so I got the three cups that I'm smooshing around for this landscape I'm doing. But, well, it's different. When will we see the landscape? <laughs> Pardon? When will we see it? Sure, it's in the it's in the basement, but uh, maybe next week we'll see it, right? Oh, I've got work to do on it. Oh, <laughs> but no, no, I've got, I've got the mountains and the trees and the stream and all that in and I'm, I've got the horse and the girl. It's a cowgirl painting. So it's my niece. Yeah. I think you brought it to sketch club and showed it to me or to us way back when you're. Yeah. Yeah. The original there. sketch. I think I yeah. showed you. We were sitting next to each other. Yeah. That's I like developed it. in the painting now and, and, um, I've had to put it off a little while. I've been so busy with the practice, but uh, um, yeah, okay, okay. That'll force me to touch it up a little bit. Well, I'm trying to give you a little, put a little fire under you. Yeah, well, it's landscapes are more complex. They, you know, plein air, you you have to be kind of quick and everything. But when you're trying to do a fairly large, serious painting, 
Oh my God, you know. There's an example, uh, you know, he mentioned John Potech, Potech, Potachnik. I can never pronounce his name. I don't know, what did, what did she say? Oh, yeah. Potachnik. Yeah, Potachnik, yeah, something like that. Uh, he has a painting that's something like 30 by 64. And he shows, that's a big painting, right? Yeah. 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 I might be off by four or five inches either way. I don't know. But he has like five YouTube videos about the painting showing how he puts in his large shapes and how he, first how he selects his colors, how he puts in his large shapes, and then how he develops the painting over several months because <laughs> had things to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I thank you guys. I, is there anything else you, does anybody have anything they want to? Thank you. I appreciate this. Yeah, I it's fun. And I really appreciate her. And I will send um, a link. She's on Facebook. You could friend her on Facebook, Sherry Thomas. And just thank her for uh, sharing with us and, uh, you know, tell her mm -hmm. that, you liked what, that would be very nice if you would do that. Because I, you know, a lot of times you, as you know, Tom, when, when you would have somebody come to do a critique or something, you pay them. Well, she did this in gratis. So, all right. so I would appreciate yeah. if you would all thank her and just shower her with praise and enthusiasm. Well, Judith, I think we owe you a thank you for yes. getting this together and going through the work to do this and bringing people in to talk. Uh, very, very nice and appreciated. Thank you. I really appreciate it too. Me too. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your... But, but, but now, what I want you guys to do is let other people know about what we're doing and invite them. Have I them do. <laughs> tell them about the, the channel and that they can go and see, you know, previous things that we did together. Um, because, you know, the more people I get involved, the more I get input about more people we can bring in. So if you know of somebody you run into somebody that you think might be somebody we could invite. I'm not going to do it every week, but at least every other week. Um, and I may, um, I'm not, I haven't made a decision about this, but uh, like today I had told you guys that I had a September, uh, my meetup, my WordPress meetup, and it meets on the first Tuesday of every month. And I, and I, they didn't have it at all, but I learned so much from it that I'm thinking that I might want to do that every first Tuesday of the month. So I may not do it here the first Tuesday of the month, but I better make a decision about that. But anyway, I love having, I'm, I don't know what I would do. I would be just at home with my husband and my, and I would be at work here with my business partner and I wouldn't see anybody else. I don't even go oh. grocery shopping. I'm so boring. So I'm so thankful that you guys show up. And, uh, and by the way, Sherry, we will go swimming. It just was 55 degrees this morning. So oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be 80 degrees soon, and uh, we'll be back. We'll do Next it. July. We have to go swimming Next before summer. <laughs> so, good night, all. Good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.